the Abdul Latif Jamil Poverty Action Lab. Translating research into action. Education. 
decision competency, whether they have the literacy or numeracy competency, whether they are receiving scholarship, this kind of thing we thought of in our program design. And then based on everything, uh, our program goal was uh, to reduce poverty through better health, education, economic and social well-being. We wanted to actually improve the situation of the 45,000 rural adolescents girls who are within the age of 10 to 19 years in five sub-districts of southern Bangladesh. And we wanted to do through the community sensitization and involvement. Uh, we have done some parental education. We built some of the asset building activities. Uh, through peer learning and graduate activities. And I already talked about some of the objectives by, by then. And if you can see, we increase the excess of safe spaces for adolescent girls. Like we thought about, if we want to think no. about the empowerment, then we have to give some spaces where they can develop themselves, they can ventilate themselves, and they can build themselves for becoming an empowered girl. And that the area can be the health education or uh, getting the economic opportunities. And the other one is to improve the adolescent girls' literacy programs, health services, recreational opportunities, and life youth skills. We also wanted to increase their knowledge and skills and to improve the home and community valuing of girls and the roles they are playing in the community. Because we always talk about uh, girls' role and we never value them. So we wanted to do some of the activities so that community can value them. And the final one is to strengthen local and national support for girl-friendly measures and policies. So the key interventions to design, like we achieve some sensitization of the community through meeting with them at different levels. So there are so many meetings uh, with the community at different levels for some activities which has been done for the girls. So it was community who has been done all the activities. And then we also educate parents of those girls at community level. The community and parents together, they selected some safe spaces or learning centers for the girls. And they also selected uh, peer leaders. They, uh, these safe spaces, when it is being selected by the community for girls' learning and recreation, that has been also equipped by some of the materials, like uh, recreation materials, resource materials. And those uh, spaces are also, they also have a provision of peer led sessions on life skills, reproductive health, rights, financial literacy, and also about the group savings. All those are being led by the girl peer leaders and for the girl members. Uh, there is a study support for the school going girls and for those who are being dropped out or never been to school, they receive some basic literacy and university support. And there was a group safe settings uh, session for the girls. That, that was a demonstration session after skills and how they are going to negotiate with uh, their uh, local earning opportunities. So we provided some of the skills to them so that they can explore some earning opportunities at the community level. And for that, uh, those some of the girls are also being linked with the local financial services and institutions either for loan or for some uh, support. Girls are also uh, learned how to lead a, uh, some uh, big activities at the community level. Like they have organized some of the events by themselves at village and union level. And they also have done some simulations on disaster risk reduction. So this kind of thing also uh, gave them some uh, confidence and skills so that they can run the events. And the finally, uh, unmarried girls, those who are between 13 to 17, they also receive some oil incentives as part of the incentive for giving their marriage. So, for research, how we came up with some of the packages. So for this project, actually we have four interventions and one control. And if we can see that we work in uh, five sub-districts and uh, three eighty villages, and from there we identified 153 villages as control. So, and uh, there are basic packages. And what we mean by basic packages? Like we have community mobilization, 
we have peer education on the social competency which comprises of reproductive health and life skills and rights and we do have literacy and study support for the school going and dropout girls. And for livelihood package, along with the basic package, we added the financial competency and savings peer education. And in the full package, we also have added, along with all in livelihood package, we added the oil incentive part for the unmarried girls. And finally, we have the delayed merit or oil incentive. That was one of the packages. So these are the implementation packages. So if we can see the randomization at email level, you will find all those intervention and controls in one email. So uh, if you can see the safe space, which is the base for all peer-led sessions, and in the, in that uh, yeah, they are getting the peer session on reproductive health, rights, and life skills. This is uh, one. And another one is safe space where they are having the peer sessions plus value skills. Again on the peer session on financial literacy and savings. And another one is incentive where they are getting wide incentives for getting their marriage. And the full one is they are having the sessions in the safe space. They are having the financial literacy and savings in, in their safe space and they are also getting the oil incentives. And the last one is in 153 villages, we have the comparison. This is the overall the randomization design. So, I will stop myself here and uh, maybe I'll request Gatil to start from there. Thank you. Mm -hmm.